Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Terry White, worldwide designer and photography evangelist here at Adobe, and it's my pleasure to be hosting yet another Adobe Live segment on one of my favorite topics with one of my favorite guests. But before we get into all of that, I just want to give some shout outs to the people in the audience today and just like thank you for being here and thank you for watching this. If you are watching this live, great. If you're watching the replay, great. I love replay numbers as much as I love live numbers. So I see Cody Bear in the house. She's our, our moderator today. And speaking of which, uh, before I forget, if you're watching this on YouTube or some other way like Facebook or Twitter or however you may be watching this, that's cool. But if you want us to see the chat, if you want to participate in every, everything that we're going to be doing today, then you need to head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. That's the one and only chat that I'll be paying attention to today. I see a YouTube one over there. Hi, everybody on YouTube, but I won't be looking at that one anymore. Cody Bear will be taking care of that chat just to remind people to pop over to this chat. So with that said, uh, I see Jan, I see Mich uh, Michael or Michelle, I see... Um, Vikram, I see RB, Matt, two Matts, Matt Grundy and Matt Vigil. Uh, General Kenobi was here. Uh, Jan Duckworth is here. I saw um, Dana earlier. So welcome, Alberto. Welcome, everyone from all over the world. We know that it's a worldwide audience watching these, and we love it so much. All right, so with that said, I've got a couple housekeeping things. Let me bring up my housekeeping notes just so I don't forget anything. Uh, so I already told you or reminded you, head over to be.net slash Adobe Live if that's where you want to, if you want to participate in the chat. Um, I also want to remind people that uh, right before this stream, if you were watching, you saw Paul Tranny doing the daily creative challenge. And today's challenge is create metallic and multicolor textures using gradients, liquify, and adjustment layers. So um, the daily creative challenge, we have one for Photoshop, we have one for XD, we have one for Illustrator, and we have one for video. We don't have them every day, but we, I mean, we don't have them all every day, but uh, each week we usually dedicate um, at least one or two to those topics. So today's Photoshop daily creative challenge, uh, you can get to that just by going to behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. And that will, um, yep, Cody's already put it in the chat. Of course, I knew she would do that. <laughs> that will take you over to the chat. You can participate. Of course, it's free to participate. And it's a way for you not only to learn more about the particular topic, in this case, Photoshop, but also for you to get starter files, for you to get templates, for you to try things out. For you, It's not a competition. It's more of a, hey, I'm following along with the instructor and I'm going to create my own version of what the instructor did. And uh, I can post it to Discord and everybody can check it out and I can get feedback and comments and help and anything else I want. So with that said, uh, definitely check out the daily creative challenges uh, that we do. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm just looking at it. Six says, I've never seen that URL. I'm at behance.net slash live. Yeah, b.net slash Adobe Live just is a short version of what you're already looking at. They both end up in the same place. All right, tomorrow we'll be looking at, an, uh, I'm not going to give you any more details until tomorrow, but we'll be looking at an artist spotlight towards the end of the stream. I believe Victoria has some handouts or things to give away or yes. talk about or want you to do. So I'll be posting those links in the chat when she talks about those things. Um, and I, speaking of which, I, let me introduce my guest. Victoria, how are you? I'm good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome <laughs> to... The Adobe Live photo compositing live stream that you've been waiting for with the one and only Victoria Pavlov. Thank you. And Victoria is affectionately known as the Photoshop artist. She does photography. She does art. She does illustration. She does vector. She does raster. She does fresco. She does Photoshop. She does Illustrator. She does Lightroom. She does it all. 
but her passion is Photoshop. Absolutely. And I would probably say Illustrator equally. So with that said, Victoria, you're going to be working on some things for the next couple of days. Yes. You want to tell us a little bit about what you're going to do today before we switch over to you? Yes. First of all, guys, I would like to say hello, and I'm so happy to be back on Adobe Live. Yeah! Um, for the next two days, including today, I will be working on photo compositing in Adobe Photoshop. Today, we will be working on fantasy photo compositing. Tomorrow, we will be working on sci-fi photo compositing in Adobe Photoshop. And thank you, thank you, Dana. Hi. And uh, by the way, we will be not working on the same image entire stream. I will try to composite at least two or three um, images. So, so it's funny how we always prepare way more files than we ever really going to have time to show. Is it what? Like, she's got at least four, I know, ready to go. But let's yes. see if we get through them today. Yes. And today, before we will start, I would like to bring your attention to this. I will be using all images from Adobe Stock. I'm a photographer, but for me, it's easier to find any asset I would like to work with on Adobe Stock. And today, uh, as usually, I'm um, uploading all my licensed images to Creative Cloud Library. Also, today I will be using 3D assets I downloaded from pixelsquid.com. You know I'm a big fan of Pixel Squid. Why? Because Pixel Squid is ready to go 3D assets. So you don't have to start um, working on your 3D uh, um, asset from scratch. They're already made for you. Download and use them. So Pixel Squid may be, of all the things you just mentioned, maybe the one thing people don't know about. So I'm going to go ahead and post that link in the chat as well. And Pixel Squid is basically a company that specializes in, in think of it as 3D stock. Because yes. it's, it's just all kinds of 3D items, elements, uh, images, and they don't, sell them as necessarily for you to use in a 3D program. They sell them for you to use in Photoshop and you can rotate them and get them just at the right angle for your compositing. Therefore, once you once you bring that layer in, it's exactly the right um, rotation or orientation for your compositing work. So check out Pixel Squid. Yes. We're not sponsored by Pixel Squid. No, absolutely. I'm just using Pixel <laughs> yeah, Squid she, five know, years. I know and I she love loves Pixel Squid, and I just wanted to make sure you guys had that in the chat just in case. Uh, it's not free. It's um, early fees about, I believe, $120, but uh, it's incredible opportunity to create something very special using their uh, assets and you have thousands and thousands of uh, assets. Yeah, and uh, I, I was amazed um, when I was going through my Star Wars phase for a minute there, I was compositing you know, the, the uh, Millennium Falcon with different scenes and they have all of the Star Wars items. Like if you wanted a lightsaber, if you wanted uh, Chewbacca, if you wanted something and be able to rotate it exactly and get it the, the exact way you want it in your composite, they have it. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and switch over to your desktop and yes. let's go. Also, one more thing. Uh, I would like to ask you, if you like what I'm doing today, I would like to ask you to create something after today's stream. Uh, Terry will provide you with the link. You will be able to upload your creation to my Dropbox and tomorrow I will pick the winner and I will give away my uh, Photoshop book. If you are located in the United States, I will send you a print uh, copy. If you are located outside of the uh, United States, I will send you an um, ebook. So Terry will send you a link to my uh, Dropbox and also well, yeah. so, to the book. Uh, in other words, she's going to give away a copy of her book, but in order, it's in order to get the book or to get a chance of winning it, you got to create something. And I'm going to give you a Dropbox link to upload your JPEG or whatever that you created for her to review. That's it. Um, she'll pick a winner tomorrow and give away a copy of her book. And I'll just put a link to the book in the chat as well. All okay. right. What are we doing? Uh, let's, start. Uh, let's start. Today, as I mentioned, we will be working on fantasy photo compositing. And behind us, uh, already you saw one of my photo compositing. And also, many of there, you yeah, guys. There it is. Yes, this one. Many of you guys ask me, I uploaded on my social media one particular image. And you all, um, I hope you are 
here today. Uh, some of, many of you asked me to recreate this image alive. So you would like to see how I created it. And I will do this for you today. As you see, I'm scrolling my um, Creative Cloud library with uh, my assets, uh, um, with my images I licensed and downloaded from Adobe Stock. So I will open my first image. This image I will be using as my uh, background image. And uh, by the way, today we will be not, and tomorrow we will be not working on something extremely difficult. I would like you, if you never worked on photo compositing, you will f feel more comfortable after my stream to start compositing something in Photoshop. So today and tomorrow my uh, primary point uh, will be to show to you that it's not necessary to use 10, 15, 100 images to composite um, one image in Photoshop. You can do it. I'm doing this as well. But I will show to you how you can use only two or three images to composite something um, very unique and beautiful. So this is my first image. Uh, it, it's my background layer. I will be not renaming it. Now I would like to open another image. So right click on my image in Creative Cloud library to highlight this image. And uh, where is it? I went out away from it. One second, guys, I will find it. Right click and I will choose a place uh, layers. I will click on it and just like that Photoshop will place this image as an um, extra layer. Definitely I will need to remove um, this background from uh, around this girl. I will do this in this way. What I will do? Dana says that, that first image looks like her backyard. <laughs> Well, Dana, you should get out and photograph that. You can make some money on stock. <laughs> yes, yes. We, we buy images like that all the time. Yeah, I bought it. And I'm using this image all the time. I'm in love with this image. So what I did, I uh, scale size down of this image. And now I will jump to... Now, I, I'm going to interrupt you a lot. So, yes. Because I want, I want Absolutely. people to really... I know you're doing it second nature, but I want people to really get the benefit of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yes. Why did you scale it down? And, and I know the answer because perspective is extremely important when you're doing composite. Yes, and I will talk about this. Okay, yes. so if you are putting two images together, not only do they have to look like they would belong in the scene once you're done, but if the person is super large compared to the tree, then it doesn't look as real. So always look at the perspective of what you're putting together and ask yourself, if you, if you just walked in the room and looked at it, would it look right? Like, would it look like that's the right size to go in that area? So the minute you brought that down, I was like, yeah, that looks great just the way you did it that quickly. Yes. Also, another tip, plus to what Sarit said, uh, when I have something in my mind, I want to start working on my photo compositing. Oh, of course, I have some a design in my head. When I start browsing Adobe Stock, I'm not just looking for any image. Example, I found this uh, background. And after that, I uh, entered search, um, example, woman in a long dress. So when uh, all result will pop up, I will start looking for um, the image for assets with some particular um, aspect ratio and um, everything like that because i will not buy uh, i will not uh, download image which is example she's flying from top to the down or any other perspective i i will uh, look for specific perspective so keep in mind also why i've scaled uh, size down if image longer than my um uh, a background image when I will cut out my main subject and after that I will decide that I need to scale size down. I will have all areas outside yeah, it, of it, my document. Right. The area outside of the document doesn't get cut out yeah. for some reason when you're doing a cut out. Because but, Photoshop cannot see it. It's outside of your document. Yeah. Uh, Sylvain has um, brought up another good point and it's one that I, I don't like I never mentioned that, or I, but I just take for granted. And that's also align the horizon line. Absolutely. So you see the horizon line for the, the grass and the tree that she's in, on. Yes. And there's also a horizon line for the background. So just aligning those will, will also help you make your scene look more realistic. Absolutely. And now after I align, um, 
as I want. For now, I will switch to one of my favorite tools, object selection tool, just like that. And I will ask Photoshop to select this girl, just like that. I made a rough selection. I released my um, mouse or pen or finger and Photoshop, <laughs> Photoshop will analyze it, right? and just like that. After that, let me zoom in my image. I will zoom in my image and you will see that Photoshop missed this part. So what I will do in the options bar, I will specify add to my selection and I will ask Photoshop, you know, Photoshop add this part to my selection. If, if Photoshop add more than I wanted, I will switch to subtract from selection and like this. Now, when everything is selected, I will click on select and mask just like that. And Photoshop will redirect me to a select and mask workspace. Select and mask workspace is my uh, one of my um, biggest love uh, inside of Photoshop. I'm using this every day, all day, and I'm in love with uh, this uh, workspace. So let me increase, um, zoom in my image. As you can see, Photoshop did great job. And I would like to bring your attention to this. Oh, look, Photoshop didn't, um, remove a partial part of uh, the grass which is above her dress ah. and i don't care about this because I, I, I and i never even looked at that as the grass i thought it was the dress was just torn that way <laughs> no and this is beautiful this is um uh, extra point to my story look at this it's like something special if you will need to uh, adjust your selection, you can do it in um, select and mask um, workspace. What I would like to do, I would like to switch to black and white uh, view mode. I will switch to refined edge brush. I will increase the size of my brush, not too much. And I will, uh, no, 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 no. Refined edge brush. And I will, what I'm doing, Second brush. Yes, second brush and subtract. And I will just, see, ah, yes. And I will a little bit fix edges of her hair. If I will switch back to onion skin, you can see now it, everything is much, much, much better. Let's see why it's doing like that. Okay. Now I'm happy with everything and now I can save my selection. I will save my selection as new layer with um, layer mask and I will check the comment colors. I don't know why I always mispronounce this. Um, yeah, you got it pretty close. Decontaminate colors. Yeah, always, always, always. I don't know. And after that, I will click OK. And just like that, Photoshop will create a new layer, a new layer with a layer mask. And by default, Photoshop will hide my original layer. I don't need this layer anymore, so I will delete it. And for those of you who are wondering, like, uh, I see a couple of questions, which I, we're, we'll get to in just a second. But uh, like Dana says, I always struggle with uh, selected mask. And Jan is asking about, can you, ex can you explain how to um, uh, align the horizon lines? So let's start with that one because that's yes. an easy one. Uh, when she when she placed before she cut the background out, um, there was the grass and then it went up to the I don't know whatever was in the background trees sky whatever it was. That's the horizon line for that image. This background image has kind of like a horizon line where the clouds are meeting the ground. Those are the two horizon lines. She can look uh, so, on my screen right now. Oh well, now. there you go. So if you basically even lower the opacity of the top layer, then you can see which one, like if the horizons are both matching. And you can so align So you don't it. want one higher than the other one, you want them aligned. That's that's all that really meant. Uh, but with the, with the select and mask, the decontaminate colors, which you were, <laughs> said you were struggling to pronounce, you got it. Um, that The reason why that's important is if you look at the original, well, she's got green grass around her, yes. blue sky around her, and those colors tend to just naturally reflect onto your dress. subject, just yeah. from the sun, just from the light, just from the whatever the atmosphere is. Um, so decontaminate color says, I, I, I know you cut it out based on the edge of the image, but that green is on the actual dress or on her hair or on whatever. I'm going to try and remove that background color from the edges of your subject that are past the area where you make the selection. So that's what decontaminate colors does. And it was originally just an on off. Now it's an on with a slider. So if decontaminate colors, like when you first click it, oh my God, it looks too much. 
you can back off of it with a slider. Also, you need to take into consideration um, subject of your uh, all assets your uh, compositing image with. Example, uh, she, she this girl um, positioned uh, close to my camera and your camera. So any subject which is close to your camera will look uh, um, larger, bigger. Subject which is close to horizon line will look smaller. It's uh, very important. So what I will do right now, I will move this girl and I will move her somewhere else. But because I love, 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 love her um, uh, dress and a uh, bottom of her dress, uh, Photoshop did a great job. And our grass, I will position her on top of uh, um, this part of the rock, which is complementing to her dress. So I will show to you. I can move her, and I will. I can put it, uh, put her um, on top of a bigger uh, rock. But you will see that I need to do some job to fix to make uh, her dress look uh, natural, and I can do it later on. But for easier for me, I will move her on. A, a place when I think it's more complementing to her address, just like that. Let me zoom out my uh, document, and what I would like to see uh, to do, I would like to uh, zoom increase uh, just scale size up of my main subject, just like that. And again, I will move her on on top of those rocks, just like that. And a look at this. Now we are talking. Yes, we have a lot of problems here. We have different colors in her dress. Um, we have uh, different colors in background and our main subject, we will fix it. For what I would like to do now, I would like to a little bit adjust her dress because if you will look, you will see that anyone who will look in my image will say, oh, Victoria, you composited this image in Photoshop and nothing wrong with it. But I always, always, always prefer to composite my image in a way if anyone will extremely zoom in my document, 300 and 400 person will be not sure if I composited this or not. It's my thing. So what I will do, I will zoom in my document extremely close. I will, let me start my vacuum. It's not starting for some reason again. Okay. Uh, I will click on a layer mask, not on a um, layer icon, a layer mask. I will switch to a brush, any brush you are more comfortable with. Um, I prefer in this particular case to use soft round brush with a black color. And what I will do, I will a little bit paint out these areas, just like that, just to make her like she stands on those rocks. Just like this and maybe around here. Just like that. Spend more time, guys. Spend more time because it's important. You are creating something unique. <laughs> so why not to create beautiful art? Um, as you see, I'm scrolling over the um, entire image to see if I missed any parts. What I'm doing, I'm, paint, I'm painting out part of her dress. So if I paint it more than I want it, I will switch color of my brush to white and I will be able to bring all details back. So now I'm happy with everything. Um, Got a lot of grass there. <laughs> I, I don't care. I will fix it okay. because I love it. If you don't like it, simply uh, use your uh, brush and um, remove the grass. What I will do now, I happy with um, uh, compositing. Now I will fix my colors. To do so, I let me close my uh, light. Mm. Creative Cloud and Pixel Squid, and I will launch adjustment um, adjustments. I always, always, always applying adjustments as a separate a layer because in this case, if ten minutes later, twenty minutes later, or ten days later, I will decide that I would like to adjust my adjustments. I can, I will be able to do it. So I'm not applying permanent uh, changes to my uh, document at least. 
I want it. And what I will do here, I will click on black and white. Um, from properties panel, I will click on um, clipping um, adjustment. So I will apply my adjustment only to the layer below my adjustment. In my case, I will apply adjustment only to this girl, not to my background, because my background black and white already. And a look at this. Now, if I would like to disable my adjustment layer, I can hide it, I can bring it back, I can change blend mode, I can change opacity, I can do whatever I like. If I would like to adjust it, double click on adjustment uh, icon and Photoshop will bring properties panel where you can adjust your adjustment from. So this is our um, uh, main subject, but I noticed here I didn't no, it's like her dress like that. Okay, I will leave it as it is. Now, let's tell the story. Now we have... Uh, now uh, we have um, outlined our st story. It's like a screaming girl, screaming or sad or I don't know whatever she's doing, but she's alone on this Iceland. And I would like to add extra details to my uh, image. To add extra details, more personal touches to my design. Thank you, Kara. I will uh, click on libraries. I will scroll up. I believe it's somewhere here my create, uh, create a cloud library and here i have a beautiful wings so uh let's see a couple questions here so carol's yeah. asking like whatever happened to smart objects smart objects are always a choice it's it's not like you have to do a smart object no and also you don't have to do it at a specific part of the workflow unless you're ready um it's just like creating 20 layers versus somebody that might delete every layer that they don't think they need anymore so all of this is a choice if you think you should do everything in a smart object immediately, by all means, do that. So it's, you know, uh, everyone's technique, everyone's process is going to be different and won't be exact. Um, smart objects are great. I use them when I need them. I don't use them every day. I don't use them all the time, but I use them when I think I'm going to need them. I set up my Photoshop preferences when I place something in my document. I place it as a um, smart object. It's easier for me if... I always can um, redo it. Yeah, and scaling in this case, since it was so minor, it's not gonna really make that big of a no, difference on this image. But if not. you felt it would, by all means, convert to Absolutely. a smart object, scale it to your heart's content, then do whatever you wanna do. Absolutely. Now, what I will do, I will select my uh, background image, background layer, and I will bring another image into my a document, just like that. And speaking about um, smart object, I will not convert my layer to smart object because I will scale size down and I will never um, scale size up. But so, if you want a smart object, absolutely. by all means, get one. So this is what I did. And now, for better preview for you, I will hide my uh, all layers on top of those wings and again I will select them just like that. I will switch to select and mask a workspace and here what I will do you see that I have a lot of work to do. I will switch to brush tool with a black uh, just a brush tool with a subtract icon selected and I will just like that. I will paint everything. And of course, guys, you can do better job than I'm doing right now. It's not my working space. So it's just like that. Uh, by the way, you can adjust your uh, brush from here. You can adjust size hardness and spacing i'm always um specify um space spacing for one percent because i don't want any scattering effect in my uh, image in my brush just like that if this will seems to you um more complicated because we have a lot of details in this image i will show you how you can do it in a easiest way just let me finish this one and again part of uh, her wings uh, will be not visible
And this is a great opportunity from a select and mask workspace to um, shape, reshape your uh, wings if you like. Uh, you can, uh, yes, I downloaded this image from Adobe Stock, but what if I would like to add my personal um, touches to image I purchased from Adobe Stock? What if I would like to make my uh, wings unique? So um, this is a great opportunity to adjust your uh, image just like that. And again, I will adjust anything um, what I want later on if I need and I will need. So after I'm happy with everything, I will um, again uh, decommentate decom colors. Decontaminate. Yes. Okay. And now look at this. Now we have two wings. I don't need to have two wings. I need to have only one wing and I will duplicate it. It's easier for me. Um, before I will do that, I would like to show to you another way of selecting. This um, wing, those wings has, um, they have very sharp edges, very obvious edges. I'm sorry. And I can remove background if I will switch to uh, magic razor tool and I will click just like that. Areas which um, I didn't remove with one click, I will extremely zoom in my document and I will remove them just like that. Look at this. So right. let me give you one more way. Yes, give me one more way. Revert it back. Undo, undo, I'm I'm do, I'm do, I'm do, I'm do. What is your way? It's interesting. Oh, okay. okay. So you know, the problem and the reason is why it's not, and I see some people suggested magic wand. The reason why it's not going to just be perfect is because yes, the background's all solid white, easy to do, and but in between the wings, it starts to turn gray. So even if you did magic wand, you'd still be clicking to try and get it off. Yes. But one way you could do it, um, Use your quick select or magic wand, either one. Quick select, quick yep. select. And just select any part of the white. Okay. Yes. I selected. Okay. Top. I, I can't see it. But anyway, um, go up to your select menu or your select menu. Wait, wait, wait. I need to rotate it back. Okay, you have to rotate it now. There you go. The old Wacom rotation. Uh, hold on to your shift, it might lock it. No. Hang on, let's see. Because you're, you're, there you go. Oh. It's very sensitive. Yeah, it is. That's it. Oh. No, 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 oh, no, you too far, too far. Oh, oh bring my God, it back. It super sensitive. Yes. All right, anyway. Uh, go ahead and zoom in on that. Don't, don't worry about the rotation. We'll fix yes. that. It's just we rotating the canvas, not the image. Yes. All right, so uh, let's see what your selection looks like. Just top. Okay, so now go up to your select menu. Select. Mm -hmm. And come down to... Um, Invert. Similar. Similar. And, yeah, ah, go. yes. So that will that's where you're basically saying, I got this one color. It may be intricate. It may not. It may even be cut off from other parts of the image. So even like a magic wand, you still have to keep clicking everywhere to get it. Whereas if you say select similar, that's saying get this color no matter where it is and no matter what island it might be isolated by. So there's, uh, and, and I see you use color range. There's all kinds of ways to do this and everyone's going to have their way. And that's great. Use your way for when you're doing this. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the rotation tool, there should be a... Um, you know, look, like let me do this. That's right. Rotate. Yes, I know, but I will. That's Very, it. Yeah, close enough. Okay. Okay. So what we are talking about? Um, so now you should be able to cut it out because that should have gotten at least most of the white, if not all of it, in the entire image. Oh, and see that even got some of the some of the feathers. I'm not sure what you did though. Of uh, just invert. We need to do invert, I believe. No, no, you you're good. Just um. Yeah, invert first, right? Because you're yeah, because you're trying to cut it out. Okay. So invert will say select not the white, but the wings themselves. Where I need to do invert? No, in your selection, undo. Go up to select. Okay. Invert, invert. Yeah. right? 
inverse. inverse. There you go. Just like that, and right? Now and now your, select the mask. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, and Boom. I love actually this more. So yes, again, look at whether this. it's magic wand, quick select, sample the white, color range, whatever way you want to do it, then you can since it's all that color throughout the image, even in isolated parts that may be disconnected. Select similar says get it all no matter where it is and then inverse the selection so you have the wing selected. Yes. So what I will do now, let me rotate it. it it's bugging me. This, there you go. Yep. That's it. Now it's back. What I will do right now, I will bring back our main character just like that. And after that, I will be back to my um, wings and I will position them behind her and this is what yeah, we were talking it's about off the canvas yeah I'm yes gonna leave it but it's okay don't worry about this i will um remove them like this and now what i will do i will select my uh, one part of her wing not mine i i wish i will have a wing i don't copy select this deselect and paste paste just like that and i will hide my original wings now what i will do i will bring it on top i will position those wings whatever i want that's why you said you only needed one yes i only needed one and what i will do here i will switch and i will delete it just like that now definitely she has two wings to make everything easier for us and it's not cheating it's working smarter so what i will do i will duplicate my layer i will lock my top layer i will select my first wing layer and i will sli slightly rotate it and i will reposition it just like that now we can see that yes 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 she has two wings not just one just like this I will unlock my top layer. What I would like to do now, I would like to add more personal touches to my uh, image. To do so, I will highlight my top layer and I will open my um, Pixel Squid plugin. You can download Pixel Squid plugin from Pixel Squid website, Photoshop plugin, or you can download Pixel Squid plugin from a plugins directly inside Adobe Photoshop. So here you can browse plugins and I believe it second from the top or third from the uh, right top you will find Pixel Squid plugin just like that. And here we have our chairs. By the way, let me do one more thing just to show to you. pixelsquid.com so look at this i'm at, on um uh, pixelsquid.com website now uh, i would like to bring a chair um chairs or um street lamp so what i can do i can um ask a pixel squid to find me any chair and look at this how many pages we have 21 pages of oh, chairs <laughs> with chairs um you can click on any chair just like that um give a few seconds uh, pixel squid website to analyze it pixel squid download this chair um into separate uh, window and now you can rotate it before you will add it to your uh, plugin in Photoshop you can rotate it actually I like this chair I will expand my light box for this scene demo. that is definitely the perfect chair yes and just like that yes I know I have a lot I will open Photoshop what I will do now I will refresh my demo folder because I just add my chair and just like this voila I will click on it just like that and look at this we have uh, shadows we have everything and the best part definitely I need to rotate my chair now I need to make decision and maybe you will help me and and that's again the the like you know, I know we're touting pixel squid and you don't ever have to use it but that is the one advantage to it that I like is that 
while your image is on Canvas in Photoshop and you need to get the angle just right, you can rotate it in the plugin and it will update that layer. Yes. So it's just amazing the way they've done that. It's amazing. So now I need to make a decision. Should, uh, should I leave my chair just looking straight at us or maybe I want to rotate it? What do you prefer, guys? Quick, well, quick, think, quick, I quick. I like that angle. I like an angle, I should say, not just straight on. Okay. Guys, what do you think? Well, it's going to take them a second to respond. <laughs> <laughs> waiting, waiting for you. Okay, we will leave uh, like Terry suggested. If uh, you will suggest something else, I will um, change it later on. And now look at um, Pixel Squid plugin uh, live preview window. You have two options. You have option to have shadow or use your uh, subject or 3D rotate. Okay, angle. Angle groovy chair, that looks good. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Angle. angle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, straight on. That's just too easy. Yeah. <laughs> angle, it looks cool. Boring you, straight on. Right, because yeah. you also get to see the horns or whatever those are on the sides mm -hmm. of the chair. Yes. Yep, show their arms as well. We exactly. All agree. So, um, I have options to have uh, shadows under my subject or a without. Also, I have an uh, option to have my 3D object in high resolution or. Um, uh, low resolution. Why? Because I'm not sure uh, do I like this uh, asset or not. If I'm using a few assets and I don't want to make uh, my file a big without any purpose, so I want to be sure that this is exactly as I want. And after that, I will specify that you know, Pixel Squid plugin, give me please my 3D object in high res because I don't want to have low resolution chair just like that and now I can scale size down okay. yep. just like that I will move my chair and put anywhere I like now we need to decide where this chair belongs to it's too big so smaller a little bit close to the tree just like that I will position it just like just like this I will accept my layer and I will reposition my um, chair uh, behind my all other subject and now what I will do I will zoom in my uh, document and I need of course to adjust this throne exactly Steve Iron throne. Yes, agree, agree, agree. This looks, looks more like the leather throne, but, but close, close enough. <laughs> but so what I will do, and by the way, Dana, this is um, a smart object layer. By default, um, Pixel Screen will add new layer as a smart object. What I would like to do, I would like to add a layer mask. I will switch to my brush tool. I will increase the size of my brush and I will slightly fix edges of a chair just like that because we have all rocks and everything and our chair will be not positioned as it is right now let's make it so more kind of make it look more like it's dug in and yes. sitting directly on top of yes. all the rocks let's make it more interesting just like that and again you will need to zoom in your image extremely and you can do better job just like that and now our chair belongs to our scene it kind of belongs because we have a different um, uh, color of our uh, chair yes but um, golden color will be not visible because I will convert it to black and white anyways so what I will do again I will uh, expand my adjustment panel uh, and here I will click on black and white and just like that because um, no I don't think we're seeing comments from YouTube yep, just be hands so yes we see your comment because <laughs> we're on behance what I will do now because when I clicked on black and white adjustment 
Um, Photoshop display properties panel with all uh, sliders uh, assigned to some specific uh, color. And using those sliders, we will make our chair looks more dramatic. So let me try yellow. What I will do, I will move my yellow slider to the left, just like that. And now I have my chair in more um, sad mood. I, I, you can do try to do same with a red slider, just like that. This is before and this is after. Look at this. Let me zoom out. This is very beautiful scene. Yeah, so just a reminder for those of you who may have just joined us in the not too long ago. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or watching this somewhere else, that's great. You can hang out and watch it wherever you want. But if you want us to see your comments, you want, us, want to be a part of the chat, head over to b.net slash Adobe Live. Uh, we, we gave this information out in the beginning, but you might have come in after. So if you were commenting on YouTube, sorry about that. But that's where we're watching the chat. Thank you, Leo. Sad mood chair. Well, yes, I mean, the, whole, the whole scene's like kind of not a happy day. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. <laughs> so a sad chair kind of goes along with it. Let's add more dramatic effect to our story. I can do it in both ways. I can use Pixel Squid plugin or I will use um, image. I will use image. I will expand my uh, libraries. I will highlight my background layer and I will bring this uh, moon into my uh, document just like that. I will uh, move it on top just like that. I will um, select my moon just like this. I will switch back to select and mask. You know I love this workspace. Okay, and just like that. Now we have this um, very bright and happy looking moon. But it's not what we are looking for. We are looking for sad, like Cody said, sad story. So what we can do, we can uh, try to change blend mode just like that and look at this. You can uh, choose uh, any blend mode you like. I prefer darken because now I can see half of my moon. My moon kind of sad and sh moon done. Not, not sure should she appear or stay hidden because she's scared, whatever. So just like this. I like it. Now we have our composition in place. I'd probably... No, Alex, I will not bring colors back. Maybe make the moon just a little smaller. I can do this. Just a little bit and move it up. Yes. Yeah. Just like that. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's better. I agree and with you. easier to see. Yes. Now we have this uh, very sad story. If you would like, you can add more details. You can add as many assets as you like. You can add 100 assets or you are happy with what you're having right now. What I would like to show to you that working with Photoshop, uh, it doesn't mean you need to uh, use assets outside of Photoshop all the time to create something, um, to apply personal touches to your uh, image. You can use built-in uh, assets. What I will do, I will create a new empty layer above my moon, but below those wings and chair and our main character. I will switch to brush tool. I like Jake. Jake's design works is, is going on the right, going to head it in the right area with a skull. Is there, I'm sure there's skulls on Pixel Squid too. Okay, let's, okay, okay, let's so, do it. So Jake's design, it looks like you're going to get your request. You're going to get a skull. How do you spell skull? skull. S, S, uh, yes, I think. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Which one? Okay, <laughs> which one? Well, they have some with crowns, they have the gold ones. We have half. Half. Uh, we have blue. Pirate skull. Disco, disco skull. Well, you can pretty pirate. much have your choice. Okay, guys, which one? Uh, no, go back up. There's too many choices back there. <laughs> go back up. Let's stick to the top. 
Um, I, have to, I would go with the one you have, the one that's spinning the half skull. Is this one? Okay. All right. I will click on add to lightbox and I will add to my demo lightbox or demo folder. I will be back to my Photoshop and I will expand uh, Pixel Squid plugin. I will refresh this library and voila. This is our skull. I will click on it. A few seconds. We need a few seconds. You just... <laughs> Look at this. Just like that. Maybe I will rotate it because... Hey, it's... I like it. I think it works. Yes, I will specify that. Yes, I would like shadows, but I, I want my skull in high res. I will switch to my move tool. I will scale size down just like that. By the way, how do you know which size of um, skull is the right? Uh, um, for this particular image. Simply make it smaller and uh, position it on top of um, main subject head. Looks like this is what we wanted and I will bring it down just like that. Just like this. Look at him. Okay. We have many objects in our image when you're working on compositing or drawing or anything like that even if you're taking pictures you need to decide which is your uh, main when which main which is main subject is we have the skull we have the chair we have our wings we have our main subject so what subject is the main subject in our composition i will make main a uh, subject in my composition a uh, school skull just like that how i will simply will not uh, put uh, this skull inside this um uh rocks and dirt it will be positioned right on top so anyone who will look first um, will look at this skull but what i will do i will expand um <laughs> skull throne yes little skulls all the way around the throne it could be done <laughs> skull mountain i can do it too now, see, I, I was gonna say it but i was thinking like a skull moon like just like oh we can do partial it partial skull in the sky kind of looking down on the ominous ominously looking down on the scene uh, guys i'm trying to it's, recreate it's, it's image just, you asked me it's like all kinds of things we can do with skulls now like i'm skull addicted we have a lot of more images <laughs> stay with me so now what i will do i launch my adjustment panel and here i will uh, click on let's click on exposure clipping mask and i will bring exposure a little bit down just like that and voila no more assets what i will do <laughs> come on we get some more skulls there's more than one there <laughs> add more <laughs> you never have too many skulls <laughs> <laughs> yes, Steve. All okay. All is okay. What I will do, I will highlight my background layer. I will create a new empty layer with no info in it. I will click on um, brush tool. I will expand my brushes library just like that. I have a lot of libraries, uh, brushes. You can have them too for free. And what I will do, I will wear my um, watercolor ah, watercolor i will expand panel just like that and here i have my favorite watercolor of brushes let's click on example this one yes i will close my a brushes panel i don't need it anymore <coughs> jake's design work i like the way you think we need a whole skull family i agree i love skull 
a scout. I'm working. Uh, sometimes people think I'm crazy because it's, it's my friends. favorite. It's my favorite. What I will do, I will increase the size of my brush. I will use da a light shade of um, gray color and I will add a little bit drama to my image using just Photoshop brushes. And what I will do now, I will bring opacity of this layer down, just like that. Wow. Yes, uh, we have different brushes. We have spatter brushes, we have FX brushes, we have a lot of uh, amazing brushes and they're free if you are a Creative Cloud subscriber. So this is all about this image. Final, yes, Kyle Webster's brushes and you can download them for free if you will open your uh, brushes panel. After that, you will click on top right icon to expand menu and here uh, you need to click get more uh, brushes and photoshop will redirect you to uh adobe website where you can download all these brushes and by the way look at this i didn't download a spring 2021 brushes just for educational purposes i would like to show to you how you can how easy you can download um, brushes to your uh, photoshop we all know that my Photoshop is opened. I didn't close it. It's still open. What I will do, I will click on download just like that. After brushes package was downloaded to my drive, I will open it just like that and look at this. Now I will scroll up. Here is my Spring Brushes 2021. So I don't have quit Photoshop and relaunch Photoshop after Photoshop um, remained open i downloaded um, all uh, brushes and that's it easy all right so a couple things leo um i know the show notes said photoshop on the ipad and we are working on that but right now it is full photoshop on on desktop um in terms of you, you have some comments about the wings so like they're saying one wing should maybe be lighter yes we will do it contrast we will do it um, i'm not done okay but uh, yeah that's it and about Photoshop on iPad, um, uh, for some reason my uh, iPad. Um, yeah, there, there's a syncing issue, so we're working through it. But we will we will try to get the Photoshop on the iPad going, and the, uh, from from the standpoint of this live, and then uh, if not today, we'll get that tomorrow. Yeah. So now when we um, happy with our composi composition, let's put everything. Um, uh back what i will do i will highlight my back wing i will open my um, adjustment properties uh, panel adjustments uh, panel i will click on a uh, brightness contrast i will ask photoshop to add adjustment only to the layer below and i will a little bit bright a little bit slightly not too much will light up my um, her wing just like that and just like this, voila. My advice to you, uh, when you are happy with your composition and you're working with client or um, uh, you think you are happy with your final composition, before applying final touches like light and everything, I will recommend to save your file as PSD file just in case because you will have all layers available for you later on if you would like to adjust, add something or remove something later on. I will be not saving it right now. What I will do, I will just click on image and I will click on duplicate, la la la, and just like that. What I will do here, I will ask Photoshop to delete hidden layers because I don't need them. Yes, yes, yes. And now I have all layers, I actual layers I'm using in this uh, composition. What I will do, I will merge visible. I will duplicate this layer just in case. And now what I will do, I will click on filter, camera raw filter. Here in camera raw filter, if you are not comfortable with camera raw, you don't have to touch any sliders. Simply click on uh, profiles here and here we have all ready to go profiles. Uh, we have black and white. Just click on it and you will see 
what you would like to do with like your the lighter ink. contrast you this have one ago. black and white zero one no keep going this yeah i like that so there is choice i will click on black and white zero two after i specified I told Photoshop that, you know, Photoshop, I would like to use uh, this um, profile. Photoshop... Yeah, wait, wait, wait. And all the profiles have a slider. So, uh, like, for example, yeah, if it was too bright, you can pull yes. it back. After I specified that, yes, I would like to use this uh, profile, Photoshop will uh, show amount slider. You can specify amount um, between 0 and 200. So basically, I'm um, never, never, never specify um, a value to 200. I'm always somewhere between um, 50 and 80. So now I will specify to 71. Even after I applied a ready to go profile, it doesn't mean I cannot adjust my image. I can. I will click on back and here I will bring down a little bit exposure. I will add a little bit contrast. I will bring down highlights just slightly. And what I will do, I will increase clarity just to bring uh, all details in this beautiful sky and the moon just like that and after that i will click ok and this is guys our image a look at this i love it thank you i like it uh, zoom in some more zoom in again not that much there zoom out so we can see the skull right there i kind of even like probably would like a version that's maybe cropped down to that but anyway that's that's cool i love it why I didn't crop it? Because if you will look at this uh, background, we have the tree stand um, up and this uh, ground just like spreading towards the camera. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to have this spreading illusion. Right. Now, and also just for some things for people that, so you won't freak out. <laughs> you can, you don't have to flatten your image. You can certainly make a flattened copy of it, like all the layers into one new layer. You can also um, convert that layer for, for smart filters so Absolutely. that when you apply camera raw, it's not permanent. So there are all kinds of ways to do this in a, in a more non-destructive way uh, if that's what you need. If you think, oh, I may need to go back and move that skull or I may need to go back and make those wings a little smaller or whatever. That's why I have by, one yeah. um, uh, document right. with all layers. By all means, keep all those layers. Um, Absolutely. But if, uh, you know, again, if you could work on it with two documents, you can certainly work on it with um, one document and just make another composite layer. Uh, I think it's command on the Mac, command option, shift E, M something, I can't remember. <laughs> it's one of those two. And that will make a composite layer of all your layers on top. So then you can run a filter on the whole composite at the same time. You also have layer groups, so you can use a layer group. Absolutely. And, Put all the layers in a folder and, and run. But this is from our folder. beginners. So. Again, it's, it's, so there's all kinds of ways to do it. By no means should you walk away thinking, oh, I need to do it exactly this way. No. Um, I see people in the chat offering suggestions, offering their way, their process, their workflow. And that's the thing about Photoshop. There's for every single thing, there's at least 50 ways to do it. So pick the way that works best for you. Stick to that way. And if you see something you like better, by all means, do it that way. Keep all the layers always, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I am, uh, there it is, Command, uh, Alt, Shift, no, E, merges them Keeps to, all the layers. Keeps all right. the layers, but it makes a new layer with, with on top of everything. Yes. So. Um, but in this case, you will increase the size of your document. Yeah, yeah, Just keep it in mind. So it's, it's like, yeah, again. If you have slow machine, it will be a little bit complicated. There so. are several ways to do it. Yes. So this is our first image. Let's. Uh, I'm not saving it because I have. Uh, okay. Not saving. All our work. Oh, and God. I was redirected back to my welcome screen. By the way, if you want to escape welcome screen and come back um, to um, workspace, simply click on this uh, Photoshop icon, and you will be redirected inside the Photoshop application. It's right one of my away. favorite tips you showed me a long time ago. Now, now we have another image. Let me open um, a live stream. So what I have a mermaid, but it will be for tomorrow. It's absolutely crazy thing. 
Okay, Iceland we did now swim underwater. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, let's do this. A woman and half moon. Yes, 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 yes. I will expand my uh, Creative Cloud libraries just like that. And this image will be absolutely not complicated. I will be not bringing anything even if you will ask. Let's keep it. <laughs> Let's so, keep it simple. No, no request for for ravens or no, 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 no. Bring them back, or, but yeah. but so I have this image. I will uh, right click, edit, and I will open this image in Photoshop. What I will do now? I will close my um, no, you know, I will not close it. I will scroll it down, and here somewhere here, I have image I would like to use today oh this one okay right click place layers and here is our image this beautiful ballerina I will scale size down because um, I would like to have if you notice our background image has more breathing space on the side so it's a longer um, not by high by wider, wider um, because I want to have more breathing space for um, a beautiful um, sky and everything like that so what I will do this side uh, size of a ballerina pretty much close to what I was looking for just like that let's zoom in let's switch back to our beautiful object selection tool let's select this girl just like this and let's specify that you know Photoshop give me a rest of her dress just like that and after that I will click on select and mask I'm happy I believe I'm happy with this selection i'm not happy so i will adjust it what i will do i will zoom in i will switch to my brush tool with add to selection and i will ask photoshop the smaller size of my brush to add this part if i uh, brought back more than i wanted i will switch to subtract and i will erase just like that same here just slightly between her fingers again guys uh and also by her ear okay yes 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 a lot um i will do it and here you can do better job of course as i ask you guys just increase the size of your document and make sure that all pixels uh, looks look as they supposed to look yeah and if you're if you're doing this for real life meaning a real project you're going to take your time you're going to zoom absolutely. in you're going to make sure every pixel in the selection is just the way you want absolutely it. it's important a lot of times here we do it quick just to get past it but you would take your time and make sure literally around go around the entire edge to make sure it's exactly what you want yes you don't you just don't want me to sit here and work on my all selections and everything like that it will be boring for you what i will do i will increase size of my brush and i will add part of her dress and even if you miss a part let's say you just didn't see something um, once you add it as a new layer with a mask, the original image is always still there. So you can go to that mask and paint over the mask or go back in the selected mask and continue working. So this is our um, basic um, outline for now. She's floating nowhere and I don't have a nice selection under her dress because I don't care about it. I will fix it just in a second. And as always, Photoshop... Um, created a new layer with a layer mask and Photoshop keep uh, hidden my original um, a layer so I will just delete this layer I don't need this layer anymore I will highlight my top layer this ballerina layer and I will uh, launch back pixel squid plugin here I have this beautiful rock I will click on this rock I will add this rock to Photoshop I mean pixel squid will add <laughs> it's huge i will rotate it 
just like this and I will bring this rock down just like that Ooh. when I will position this rock um, next uh, under um, a line top of my rock with her dress I will see that it's not the right perspective so what I will do I will rotate a little bit more just like that and now we have the right perspective what I will do I will move it a little bit up just like that and I will position um, my rock behind this girl so you're now make, you're making your own clip yes this guy this guy cool what i will do i don't need shadows uh, in my 3d object but of course i need a high resolution just like that and now i will zoom in my document just like that and i see all imperfections under a ballerina dress what i will do i will click on a layer mask i will switch back to my brush i will switch back to 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 to, to soft round brush with smaller size of course just like that and i will erase part of my her dress i mean just like that and because part of her dress will be not visible uh, above the rock not supposed to be visible i will erase this part just like that to make our um, composition looks more um, realistic just like that smaller size of your brush will help you to do better job just like that and here just like that but i will not touch this part of her dress i want this a uh, part of her dress um, will be um, just like um, flying away from our main subject because she's standing like this i'm not ballerina so something like this uh, let me clean up this rock a little bit more just like that and let me zoom out look at this now she just stands on top of um, this rock uh, cliff and um, uh, this composition looks more natural but uh color of the rock is different i was waiting for you to say that because that rock looks like it was lit in the studio <laughs> <laughs> yes like totally different color for that atmosphere so what i will do i can add dramatic effect to my cliff i can make it just darker or i can assign some specific uh color from our background or from our uh, ballerina assigned to this rock. Uh, but I prefer, I prefer to add a little bit more um, unique effect to my rock. So I will use um, blue, dark, uh, purple color. I will highlight my rock. I will um, display adjustment panel. And here I will click on color balance and let's see and i will ask photoshop to add adjustment only to my rock just like that and let's see and i will do like this don't uh, be patient with me we are not done just like this after that i will uh, click on exposure again i will ask add exposure only to my rock and i will bring down exposure just like that and now we have just like this. I'm not working on our ballerina light effect right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> because we will uh, add moon and everything like that. And light um, on our ballerina will um, comes from our moon. So speaking about the moon i will highlight our top layer our ballerina layer expand libraries panel where is it where is it where is it here 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 stay with me stay with me by the way you can make search moon but it's um name of this asset is different 
this place layer uh, select just like that select and mask decontaminate just like that and what i would like to do right now i will zoom in my document i will bring my moon a little bit upper just like that like moon um is touching her hands or she's just pushing moon away i don't want to have full moon i want to have half moon i will switch to elliptical margin tool i will select part of my moon no i'm sorry what i will do i will switch color to white and after that i will hit delete i will deselect it so that's just masking it so yes it's still masking there. it's still there i'm i'm not applying any permanent changes to my layer but what i would like to do i would like to rotate my moon i will switch to my uh, move tool and i will rotate it just like that and now she's almost almost touching the half moon just like that look at this now we are talking i can change color of this moon N not a problem but speaking about our main uh, uh, focus point i would like to bring my viewers attention right to the moon you will say victoria why if we have this beautiful uh, ballerina yes this beautiful ball ballerina uh, uh located in this beautiful night and she is all about this beautiful night she's so happy about this night that she's dancing so our moon is the main point focus so because of that i will not uh, apply uh, any color i will not change color of my moon but what i will do now i would like to let's close i would like to add um I, I would like to correct my light in uh, entire uh, composition because main source of the light uh, comes from the moon <laughs> i will select top layer yes jen exactly maybe maybe let's let's talk about it what i will do i will expand my adjustment panel here i will um, click on a brightness contrast I will not be adding clipping mask because I would like to add adjustment to entire image and I will bring down uh, I will make my image darker yeah, just well, like uh, that it might be too dark uh, I will change it okay what I will do now I will highlight my um, moon layer and I will display uh, move it on top of my all images after that because it just uh, photoshop adding adjustment layer with a layer mask already i will select my layer mask not adjustment i will click i'm not clicking on adjustment um layer icon i'm clicking on adjustment layer mask icon after that i will switch uh, color to black i will switch uh, to gradient tool i will be using um a radial gradient from black to transparent and what i will do i will simply ask photoshop you know photoshop i need this area lighter i will bring opacity of my gradient to more up to about 62 and now now we will add a light from the moon just like that uh -huh. yes and to her face so i'm not applying gradient tool anywhere else i'm clicking directly above the moon just slightly and i'm dragging to the point when i want a light will stop just like that and just like that and look at this if you would like to make it more realistic looking it, uh, bring up our opacity value of your gradient tool to 100 percent and make it lighter um area uh, close to the moon supposed to be lighter just like that and if for you 
um, yeah, brightness and contrast. I applied um, bright, make, if I made this image darker than you think it should be, simply bring opacity of your adjustment layer down, just like that. But I like that. So there's something you did in the last image. I would definitely like to see you do this one. What? Above the moon layer. I would love to see you use that brush where you painted in some atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Because right now your moon just looks like it's just a shape sitting on top of clouds. Yes. But it, I, would, I would almost want to make it look like there's some mist or sky or clouds in front of it. Um, okay. So one of the ways to do that is just with that brush technique you showed. Yes. Uh, so I will highlight my top layer, my moon layer. I will create a new empty layer. Empty layer, why I'm specifying empty layer? Because this layer has no info. It's empty. Uh, I will switch to eyedropper tool and I will pick color from my uh, sky image. So uh, let's use this color. After that, I will switch to my uh, brush tool. The last brush I used. Just like that. Let's close. And I will bring size of my brush down and I will add a little bit. If I don't like this brush, so what I will do, I will leave it as it is, but I will create a new empty layer. I will switch to another brush. Why? Because I want to have more texture in my, um, uh, in my clouds. So I will be using steel, uh, uh, watercolor brush, but with more texture. Let's see. Let's do this. No, actually, uh, you're applying it to the moon. I, I like I like that. And in, in your last scene, remember where you like paint it just a big like yes mist behind or in front of the tree, like something like that on its own layer. Okay, it's on own layer. It's yeah. on its own yeah, layer. Like that looked like it was just applying it to the moon as opposed to just being in. Front yeah, of the I need to switch color in that case. So yeah. let's use brighter color. Increase size of your brush and just like yeah this. there you go that's what i was talking about okay and if it's for your taste it's too much mm. yeah i wouldn't yeah. I, I can double um create layer behind her if for your taste it's too much simply bring down um, opacity of your layer and now i will create a layer behind my ballerina Let's close properties panel and we will add a little bit there behind you go. That, just like that. Just like that. If you would like to add more uh, details, coffee, 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 Steve. If you would like to add more uh, details, example, we have a lot of. Um, uh, uh, stars we can do it as well i will create a new empty layer on top of my old layers i will switch back to my uh, brush tool with almost um, uh, bright blue color i will switch to another brush let me bring it uh, i will switch i will switch i will switch to let me close special effects brushes i will expand this library and here we have Let's use this brush, maybe, and just like that, you can, it's too much, you can add just a little bit, splash of uh, color, and again, you can adjust your brush in the way you like, but what I would like to do, I would like to bring just opacity down, just like that. So. Now, after we done uh, with the composition, of course, I will... Uh, All right, I got one, one more suggestion. On the moon, just yes. the moon layer itself. Yes. Can you, like right now it's ha hanging down, can you rotate it maybe a little more to the right and make it a little smaller? Absolutely, this is our moon layer. Rotate, I'll tell you when. Nope, the other way. Other way, other way, other way. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Like this. Yeah, something like that, and then make it smaller. Okay. 
and then move it further away. Yes. Yeah. Okay. More. Keep going. Keep, yeah, I know she's. You want her to touch it. But yeah. Keep going. Keep going. It's just like she's, she's oh, separating she's from it. No, she's reaching for it. Like it's not an easy reach. Like she can't just grab it. Oh, okay. Got, yeah. There we go. That would be my take on that. But you can have it anyway. No. Okay. 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 So what else we can do? Your rock, your your cliff. Yes. What, that, what about it? Still it? looks like it's got that highlight to the left. Of okay. It, like we, in front of it. We can we can adjust. Just, it. Yeah. Either either mask it off. To just erase that highlight off the front of it. Where is it? Which one? Not sure. No, this one. No, this one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that, it still looks like it has a halo around it. So I will do this. Just a little bit, and also I can mask well, it you out. Well, you could keep it. No, you keep it the way it was, and just mask out the front of it. Like just paint a little bit of that that light edge off the front of it. Okay, let's add a layer mask. I'm also playing host and art director at the same time. <laughs> we'll switch to soft round brush. Yeah, and just a little off the front of that edge. And yeah, there you go. That's it. Yeah, just, just like that. Keep going. Just to get rid yeah, just get rid of that highlight off the front of it. Oh, okay. That's not the way it would really look with the light coming down from the moon like that. But now that's better. Yeah, Mary, we are in the same room. Yeah. See? <laughs> <laughs> so just like that now i will save this image there we go that was that was because the whole thing looked good that was the only thing bugging me is that that just wouldn't have that bright light on the front of it so uh i will save this layer as a separate uh, this document as psd file native photoshop file because i want to preserve our layers but before that Give you a few seconds to think about this. Are you happy with all layers? You sure you will be not using hidden layers? Why I'm masking about it? Because every single layer will increase the space of your file. Um, if you do, if you know you will never use those hidden uh, hidden layers, just delete them ask photoshop to delete them photoshop gladly will do it for you just like that now we have everything organized and please 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 rename rename your layers i didn't rename uh pixel squid uh 3d objects or layers because they are already named so i don't have to rename them let's pretend I saved this as PSD file. Another copy I will merge visible. Uh, now I will launch my um, camera raw filter just like this. I will switch back to profiles and I will expand artistic family profile. And look at this. Oh. Yeah, there it is. Oh. So it makes it better. So, and this is the final image i can ex uh, increase amount oh so here's a here's a quick again just a quick tip like if you if you wanted that moon to like create a spotlight on her face so you could use like the radial adjustment yes 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 now let's be, be back uh use radial adjustment let's select her just maybe a little bit like that from yeah. the moon it's Invert and let's make it brighter. No, not invert. And just yeah. a lot. See how it just it just makes that nat more natural looking spotlight, like right on your subject. And you can make it smaller. Yes. You can make it less. You don't have to make it that and bright. And look, it's but it just gives you that little extra oomph to the yeah. lighting of your of your subject. And look, yes, yes, exactly. This part of her face a little bit. Uh, in the shadow because this um, the main source of the light our moon so look at this and hands which is close to yeah, the and I would, moon yeah I know, I know you merged it but I would even move the, move yeah. the moon up a little bit because light is directional yeah so you'd probably want it just even a little bit higher that's why I don't merge your layers yeah. until you completely <laughs> until happy ready. yeah yeah so this is our image guys look at this what do you think? 
Well, Dana says that is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Now, let me open my um, project. I... Yeah, we got about 25 minutes left. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's work on underwater. Oh, yes. So. And while you're doing that, I'm going to put, a, put the link to the drop re Dropbox request. So if you guys want a shot at winning Victoria's book for, she'll give it away tomorrow, go create your own composite. Just, you know, inspired by what you saw today and submit your, um, your JPEG or whatever you save it as um, to this Dropbox link, which I'm going to put in the chat right now. And uh, Victoria will pick a winner from any submissions we get uh, tomorrow. So you have all night to work on it all day to, until tomorrow, same time to work on it and submit it. And then we'll pick one or she'll pick one and give away a copy of her book. Maria, you can uh, launch Camera Raw from, if you will click on filter and here Camera Raw, click on it. And after that here, profiles, click on profiles and just like that. And also I, I glanced over at the YouTube chat. I wasn't looking at it, I glanced at it. Someone said, could you show how to cut out the moon again? Uh, okay, let's do it, let's do it. Let's bring back our moon. No, you know, I will create a new document just for you to show to you. This is a um, simple document with white background. I will bring my moon like a layer. Let me increase the size just like that. Now what I will do, let me... So Nathan, here you go. I, I wasn't supposed to see your comment, but there you go. Yeah, I'm just bringing another layer just for visual representation, just like that. So this is our moon. I will select our moon layer. I will switch to uh, object selection tool and I will uh, select our moon. Rough selection, I don't have to do great job because Photoshop will do everything for me. Photoshop selected it. I will uh, click on select and mask a workspace. Here, um, uh, I will specify that uh, new layer with a layer mask, just like that. Now, I will select my uh, layer mask. I will switch foreground color to white. I will switch to elliptical margin tool. I will make selection I would like to delete just like that. Area which is inside of my selection will be deleted. So in other words, you're using this new ellipse to cut the moon out. Yes. So I selected part of my moon I don't want to see. And after that, I will click delete key just like that. And, deselect. and if you're on a PC, that would be the backspace key. Yeah. And that's it. Now let's talk about another image. Yep, 22 minutes. You got time for another one? Yes, I have. I will be rushing. So let me scroll up my library. Here I have image I downloaded and licensed from Adobe Stock. I will click edit. I will open it. I will unlock this layer. What I will do now, I will zoom in my document and I would like to cut um, those white areas, probably picture holder. What I will do, I will switch to um, Restangle Market Tool. I will select white parts inside the frame. I will click delete. After that, I will switch to this one. I will do the same. Delete. I will move to another one and I will click, I will select it and I will click delete. So I'm using Restangle Margit tool to select those. But if you will look on my other two windows, they have kind of curvy shape. Oh, yeah. To make everything easier for me, thank you Photoshop team, I will switch back to object selection tool and I will ask Photoshop to select this part just like that. Photoshop selected it. If I want to be more um, accurate, I will specify that don't select this part of the frame just like that. Delete. And you can also use objects or the quick selection tool yes. or the magic wand or any of the other ones that you think will do the job. You yes, want. absolutely. Delete just like that same with this window and again 
you have more time deselect you have more time select in more accurate way and delete okay let's pretend we um, did everything and in excellent way now here i have another image i would like to use let me scroll up my uh, library here i have 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 i know i have it <laughs> Creative mm -hmm. Cloud Library is great, but it's easy to accumulate a ton of stuff in one library. So, and you need to, you, you can organize library. Yeah, another way to do it is just make a library for the particular project you're working on. Or organize way. it. Or organize it. By folders. And that way you won't have as many in there. Yeah, if you will organize by folders, everything will be much, much easier to find. Uh, where is it? it's somewhere here i know if not i will bring from my folder i think it's here so i will click on this image i will drag this image into my document yes this image what i will do right now i will position this layer right um behind my windows and i want to see just those uh, waves i don't want to see anything else so i don't want to see horizon line or anything like that waves are what i want to see what i will do i will a little bit uh, yeah. scale up click ok and i will reposition this layer behind my that layer and now i have kind of a room under the water but our room it's too bright it's not under the water it's just like oh my god it's sunny day how can i change it i will select my um bright room a layer I will expand adjustment properties, adjustment uh, panel, and here I will click on create a new photo filter adjustment layer. Here I will expand um, a library and I will click on underwater, just like that. After that, I <laughs> have one actually called underwater. Yes. <laughs> and after that, I have slider. Uh, slider will help me to specify specific amount of underwater filter I would like to apply to my uh, image just like that it looks more like water but not exactly as I want to to see what I will do I will click on photo filter one more time I will expand default library and here we have cooling filter just like that again we have different um, cooling filters you can play with it and my favorite is this one and just like this we have more underwater feeling of uh, underwater and this is uh yeah well, she's doing it just with a photo filter but this is also something that's huge in movies and tv shows is, and we call it color grading so just making the the scenes match and also making them look the way they they're supposed to look based on the effect you're creating so uh, that brightly lit warm room r really wouldn't have looked like that if it was underwater. It looked bluish like this. Yes. So that, that is the reason why we color gray, the reason why we change the colors in composites to make them look like the, the environment we're supposed to be uh, c creating them in. Now, I have another um, uh, ocean image. I will bring it into my document on top of my all other layers. I will just a little bit make it wider and bring it down. What I would like to do, I don't need top. Okay, let me rasterize it. Rasterize it. I will delete unnecessary gray area because I don't need this gray area. And after that, I will try to change blend mode to see let's see i kind of like i know what i like that last one that looks pretty no. yeah that, one, that looks good but it's i'm losing um let's see let's see let's see hmm Okay, let's uh, switch to overlay. And what I will do, I will bring it down. Just like that. Why? Because I want to see, I want to 
uh, let my viewers know that this is underwater and we have water in it, but it's not like, um, it's a living space actually. It's well, a it, let's try this too, if you want to double, because I, I know that's not exactly what you want it. So try duplicating that layer. I will duplicate on. later on. Okay, all right. That's why. Never mind. And now, if we will look um, at our windows, our windows like it was stormy day and we have no glass in our windows, we need to add more realistic effect to our image. To do so, I will highlight my bottom layer, our waves la layer. I will switch to white uh, color and I will simply create this white uh, this one second wide shape behind all those windows yeah i need to change color and definitely i don't need um stroke and now what i will do i will bring down opacity of the this white rectangle just slightly just like that because remember we are creating one fantasy image somebody is actually living inside this um, room and actually very happy with it now what we will do now now we need to bring a living person inside this room i will scroll up my library in here i have this girl right click place layers position layers on top all other layers just like that bringing down size because we need to take the consideration size of our room what time is it oh yeah there are two minutes left i have time and what i will do i will switch to object selection tool thank you thank you tracy i will add more water uh, just in a second and i will select uh, this uh, woman also I will tell Photoshop you know I need hair too just like that uh, select and mask here I will um, in perfect world when I'm working um, without uh, 13 minutes left I will brush <laughs> it better just like oh oopsie 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 I will down just like that Well, Tracy says she's loving this composite. And Thank Jake, you. that's what I was suggesting, but she says she was going to do it later. Yes, I will do it later. So this is our girl. She's flying. Decommentate colors, separate layer. Photoshop will create a new layer with layer mask. Delete our original hidden layer. And now we have this girl. And again, uh, if you're not happy, if you made mistake with selection like I did now, you can bring everything back if you will switch color of your brush to white and you can bring details back or double click on layer mask it will be redirect redirect you back to um, select and mask workspace where actually you can add you can fix your selection just like that I need more details in her hands. She should probably keep her fingers. I agree. Yes. Just like that. Yeah, perfect. Decommented colors. And Photoshop will create a new empty layer, a new layer with layer mask, and Photoshop will keep hidden previous layer. We don't need it, we will delete it. Just like that. And again, guys, you can do a better job just my ocd i can't leave it okay this is our um flying woman again color of her dress and her skin looks like studio. Studio. Yep. yeah we need to add more underwater uh, filling what I will do, I will click back on photo filter. I will click back to underwater. I will ask Photoshop to add only to the layer below and I will increase just like that. There you go. And this is enough. 
for our style. Now let's talk about uh, water because she's underwater. Definitely she has some waves flying around her uh, dress. I will duplicate this layer. I know guys you suggested water layer and I will move it on top of my all other layers. So and, and the reason uh, I said duplicate and Jake said duplicate is that when you apply a layer math, or I'm sorry, a blend mode to a layer, um, and, I, and I and made the layer too light, one of the ways to build it, just simply build it back up, is to duplicate the layer. Because it's going to duplicate it with the same blend mode, so it's going to have the same effect. But then you can duplicate it as many times as you want to build up the uh, opacity of it, or so to make it show better. So just simply duplicating it will give you twice that layer with that same blend mode. Yes, and I moved my uh, layer um, on top of uh, her dress. And as you notice here, I have imperfections. So what I will do, I will apply a layer mask. I will switch foreground color to black. I will switch back to uh, my um, uh, gradient tool from um, black to transparent. And I will just delete areas which i don't need just like that now she just flying from nowhere it's not living area nobody living in there nobody living in empty I have a chair. area no i'm just kidding <laughs> chair okay let's bring back no no no. No, no 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 let's do it I let's bring chair. back and a skull <laughs> let's bring back our um what is the name um pixel squid plugin and i will switch to uh, I will switch to another uh, library, not this one, Ocean. Yes, Ocean Library. And here I have this chair, or I don't. Mm, I don't have this chair. So let's switch back to demo folder. Any chair will do. Yeah, yeah, but I want some with a long back. Oh, okay. So, ah, this chair. I will click on this chair, and just like that, uh, Pixel Squid plugin will add it. I, I want to have shadows, and I want to have my um, chair in high red. Definitely, I need to scale size down of this chair. Just like that, and I will rotate my chair because it's floating, and I will move it just like that. I'll probably flip it around, and face the other way, like she just floated out of it. So, in other words, flip, flip. the chair yeah, okay. or rotate it either way. I can rotate from Pixel Squid yeah, plugin, or I will rotate it just like that. Yeah, there you go. Okay, let's do like this. And now to be more on fantasy uh, style, how many minutes? Oh, okay. Seven minutes. We will add more interesting details, more personal touches. What we will do, completely crazy thing. We will click on, we will click, we will click, we will click on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jake says. Add some fish friends. <laughs> yes, yes, this is what I was looking for. But before that, I will add this tree just like that. We'll click on this tree, Photoshop um, plugin will add it, Pixel Squid. To our composition, I will rotate it, I will change perspective. I will ask Pixel Squid plugin, I don't need shadow, but I need in high res. And after that, I will. Um, Flip it vertical, and I will move it a little bit on Very top, cool. just like that. Maybe a little bit bigger, and I will slightly rotate it to other, no, this way now. Just, no, not too much. Just like that. And what we will do now, we will switch back to my another library. I want to see where I saved my fishy fishy. Okay, fishy fishy in my ocean library. Ocean. Here we have fishy fishy. I will click on this fish. It's my, by the way, favorite fish in um, uh, Pixel Squid. 
No, no, Jen, because we have windows. Because it's a living situation. It's just somebody <laughs> living <laughs> under the ocean. So live in the ocean and they're dancing. Yes, and they're they happy. Have a, have a stingray, buddy. Yes. I will rotate my fish a little bit and I will move it on the side. I will bring size of my fish down just like that. Maybe just like that. I don't need shadows in my fish, but I need my fish in high areas. And again, we have a studio 3D created fish. We need to yep, add. And a chair and a tree. Yes. We will um, switch back to our um, underwater, add to the fish, just to the fish, just like that. We switch back to our chair. We will apply same filter underwater to our chair a little bit more extreme just like yeah the that. chair yeah it looks better on the chair yeah just like that if you would like to stay on extreme side add a little bit more um, pixel squid plugin uh, let's add this beautiful jellyfish just like that and what i would like to do i would like to rotate her <laughs> yes, bubbles. It's getting, it's getting to be an aquarium, yes. Just like that. I don't need shadows, but I need... Steve, what am I going to do with you? <laughs> I, I thought, Mark, um, Ray is a fish. It's not? Ocean dweller, we'll call it that. So I didn't know that, thank you. A little bit more just like this. So what we can do, we can switch back to our favorite Pixel Squid plugin and here in the ocean, in the ocean or not in the ocean, in the demo folder probably, I have water. Now, what about the tree? Are you just going to keep the tree that purpley blue color? Yes, because I want to make point. Just a little bit of blue to it. Just a little bit. Okay, he wants a blue. Where is my tree? Blue my tree. Just a slight amount. Okay. To make it look like it's not in, it's underwater and not in air. Yeah, no, not even that much. You can come back. Just More. like this? No, even less than that. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a taste of that underwater color. Just like this? Yep. Now we will switch back to Pixel Squid plugin. And here I have somewhere I have a water splash. Yeah, Plant. Two minutes. Two minutes, two minutes, guys. Two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Okay, water splash. I will click on any water splash. We have a lot, a lot of different splashes. So just like that, fast, fast, fast. Oops, sir. I don't need shadows, I need high res. Bring size down. And example, position it somewhere when you like. Let's do like this, her leg. Mm, like this, okay. Of course, guys, you can adjust, you can rotate, you can do whatever you like, but we don't have time, or we have time. We have one minute and 31 seconds. Okay. So whatever you can get done in one minute and 31 seconds. I will zoom in my document. I will rotate my Pixel Squid plugin just slightly, just like that. And now, guys, we have movement of the dress. Maybe we will make it smaller. Mark says, I'm sorry it is a fish. I was wrong. My bad. Okay, thank you. Dana says, I learned so much today. Great, Dana. And now I will add... Uh, Cody Bear says, I vote for a giant goldfish. Ah! I, could, I could see where you're going with that. A giant goldfish would work. Yeah, just like this. And let's zoom out. And of course, I had... a 
a few more images for today, but we will do it today, tomorrow. And tomorrow we have something very special. So now we are saving uh, to preserve all um, layers. After that, we merge them. After that, we're going to camera raw filter. And here we can change exposure a little bit down. We can add contrast because it's under the water. We can uh, bring down a little bit highlights. We can uh, bring back our shadows. Uh, and what else? Oh, temperature. You can play with temperature slider. Let's make it cooler or warmer. Not warmer. Definitely not warmer. So cooler just slightly just like this what else if we will um display curve uh, workspace we can um add a little bit more a light a little bit and we'll play with shadows and after that we will click okay all just right like that. well that is it that's all we have time for today so victoria I like of all the scenes you created today this is by far my favorite thank you i love the underwater look i love the blue i love just the way that came out um fantastic job and uh go create your own composite and submit it to the dropbox link we put in the chat and we'd love to see what you guys come up with and we will our victoria will give away a copy of her book tomorrow and uh just composite whatever you want and see what, and let's see what it is so we're done for the day. We'll be back tomorrow, same time. And I'm just going to turn it over to, um, to Adobe Live for the next segment that's coming up. Stay tuned.